So, I hold a Tumblr blog where people sometimes ask me questions, and most of those questions are about my thoughts on things or advice I have regarding various situations. I got a question recently that was kind of hard to answer because I've never really thought about it and I've never really had to answer it in a concrete way. I thought it was interesting, so I felt like speaking it out loud and sharing it to this medium as well, not just in text. The question was, how can I stop hurting? You can see how that might have taken me a little off guard, because it's quite vague, broad, and general. It's hard to answer questions like those without going super abstract yourself, but I tried. If the hurt is very recent, just survive. You're not going to stop hurting for a while, and this is okay. It's okay to hurt and to be hurt. You're not wrong or broken for feeling agony. Most people aren't strong enough to confront mental harm directly after a painful or traumatic event, nor is this a negative thing or a deficiency, it's very normal. It's extremely rare for a person to have the emotional resilience to address something like that in their mind as soon as it happens, so what that means is you need some time. You've taken some damage, you need to back out, survive first, live later. If the hurt is not recent, and it flares up at irregular frequencies, with enough time having passed between you and the event in question, you might be able to dive into deep reflection and identify which parts of you have been harmed by it. You should be able to find out what those are if you feel really strong aversion or resistance to self-healing in certain sectors of your emotion, because sometimes it's easier and it's less effort to not get better. Sometimes we don't want to get better because it would be frightening or hurtful or exhausting or difficult to bear. It's easier to just leave it in the background. Ultimately, the thing is you cannot let this stay inside you without confronting it eventually. It'll bleed your mind slowly every day, some days flaring up and reminding you, some days being triggered by something. Whether you do this by yourself, with a close friend who understands you deeply, or with a therapist that you hire, some wounds do not close until you walk at them with a fistful of flame in one hand and a sword in the other. It's easiest to ask for support from trusted friends or a professional mind healer, but some people will have different predispositions toward trusting friends versus trusting therapists. And that's fine, that's not wrong. There are many right ways to do this. I'm going to clear up some potentially damaging bullshit related to that. So, you are responsible for your own mind. You do not need to succumb to the social pressure of only a therapist is the right way. That's not true. The right way is anything that'll lead to you healing. If you're honest with yourself, you should have a good idea of what direction that lies in. And if a friend is pressuring you to only trust them, which is, you know, the flip side, like making you anxious about therapists or speaking ill of them when they've actually been working out pretty well for you, take distance from that person. Everyone's experiences are valuable, yeah, and inform how they approach things, but you are trying to heal your mind, so if you find something that works, use it without hesitation. Basically, take distance from anything that will be detrimental to your healing, slow you down, or make you worse. Why? Well, this is why. Because you've already been made to feel unsafe by a damaging event. Because of this, your mind's not going to heal near a person you feel unsafe with. So if you feel unsafe with a therapist, or if you feel unsafe with a stranger, that's not going to work for you. And if you feel unsafe with a particular friend, or a family member, that's not going to work for you either. You have to figure out what makes you feel least threatened, and draw support from that source. The important thing is to have a will to heal, because the most crippling aspect of taking emotional and mental damage is that's what's the first to go, the first to be destroyed. You need to rebuild your desire to even heal at all. You need to reconstruct your wish to be better, even if it's tiring. Because you can be, and it will feel good to be, and it will hurt less to be. But like pulling out a vicious shattered splinter in a sensitive patch of skin, it will be tough during. It's extremely hard to overcome this kind of stuff without help of some kind. Just make sure you don't feel pressured into doing something that's only going to make you more distressed. Make your own decisions on who you trust to be a decent teammate here. Everything else is just noise and bullshit and might even make you worse. Making your own decisions will also show you that you are in control and let you retake that control with your own hands, which is extremely important. 
mental pain and emotional suffering can make us feel very helpless. So even when we do have control, it doesn't feel that way. The control slips away because we assume there's nothing we can do. In that way, the helplessness becomes real. So choosing things on your own and seeing them work out for you over and over again, even if they're tiny little steps, that's critical to recovery of any kind because it reminds you that there's still things you can do. In the end, it's not about doing what other people tell you is right. It's about doing what will let you in particular heal fastest. And that applies to all of this too, so take what works for you from this talk and discard the rest. Leo K out.